People often ask me about the origins of David Mitchell's soapbox. And by people, I mean no one. And by often, I mean ever. Well, according to legend, it began when my distant ancestor, Wilkin de Mitchell, discovered a mouse was living in the wattle and daub of his cottage. His wife cried out for him to kill it, evict it, or at least sling it in the stew pot to bulk out the pottage. But Wilkin had a better idea. Pausing only to pull on a red smock, he strode out to the village bathhouse, sat on a box and whinged about the situation for three minutes while staring fixedly at an indeterminate point in the middle distance. It's a lovely story, but the truth, of course, is somewhat more prosaic. The soapbox in fact began with my great-great-great-grandfather, Sir Danvers Mitchell, the Victorian industrialist and proprietor of Mitchell's Puritanical Cleansing Requisites, slogan, Scrub Away the Shame with Mitchell's. It was he who began to print improving tracts on the side of his soapboxes. At first, there are more or less relevant subjects, such as his soap and why you should buy more of it, or his competitor's soap and why you should buy less of it. However, as time went on and his grip upon sanity became progressively looser, he began to write on any topic that happened to enrage him that day, from how Britain would never be fully protected until every Briton commanded his own personal dreadnought, to how Disraeli was shaming his nation by forcing it to have a Prime Minister with a goatee. Although Mitchell's Soap Limited has long since been wound up, following a disastrously confusing merger with Webb's Soups Limited, it has remained a tradition that the angriest member of the Mitchell family at any given time should vent his spleen with a series of short rants on topics which couldn't matter less, in memory of our furious ancestor. That honour has now fallen to me, and I invite you to click here or here to enjoy a veritable feast of peevishness. Thank you.